All right. We are here. We are here with my dude, Grand Cam in the building. What's going on, fam? How you been? What's going on? What's popping with you? I'm doing absolutely well, Mr. Lucario. It's a pleasure. It's an honor to be on your platform, to be on your channel. Thank you for mm -hmm. having me. It's it's been a it's been something I've been wanting. It's a goal, personal goal of mine, to be honest mm -hmm. with you, that I want to be on your YouTube channel mm -hmm. and to share the knowledge that you have helped me with to your audience and share my own wisdom that I've gained uh, through self development. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. And shout out to everybody in the chat. Monogamous player, AJ Lindo, uh, Armani, AT, April, MC, my lovely lady in the building. Shout out to Joe Blast in the motherfucking building. Shout out Joe Blast. Shout out Renee is in the building. What's going on? Certified Tyrone, AJ Lindo, uh, Kayshawn, uh, Victor was popping. Navin was good. Quan J was going on. So, guys, today we're gonna be talking about you know uh how to become a natural with women and grand camp. You got a, a retreat coming up, right? When is tell us about the retreat real quick? Yeah, absolutely. So the video you're gonna be showing in just a moment will explain um just like a visual of what to expect. But essentially, uh the retreat was started when I, I love to help guys in person. I do online coaching, but I also love to help guys in person where we do transformations for these guys. So essentially these guys are going to be going through um, approaches during the daytime. We will, we will have table bottle service for two, uh, two, two days of the clubs that we're going to be going to. Mm -hmm. uh, we're helping guys just overcome any kind of like issues with their masculinity, Mr. Lucario, and especially helping them with becoming more authentic, transparent. And I'll say the last piece that is something very big that a lot of my clients are looking forward to that are going to be on this retreat is they have issues expressing themselves the way they wish to express themselves. So they're constantly concerned about validation, approval, and people-pleasing. Right. We're going to talk about how to get over that and be the grand male that they're destined to be, but also be very liberated in who they want to be. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what I like to hear. You know what I'm saying? That's it. You to it. So let, let's, let's play this real quick, and then we're going to get into some, some game in a second. Let's go. Let me, let's... uh. Put this on. Let's do this. Shut it so bad when she's lying down to pull ya. When she's talking dirty while we getting closer. Shut it so bad and then I try while we go to the city of the rose, yeah. Join me at the next Vegas retreat. All right, that's what's up, man. We about to <laughs> hey, hold on. This is this is coming up soon, right? This is coming up March what 20, 28th? I mean 23rd to the 28th. Yeah, in a couple of weeks. This is this is going down. We got four clients that have uh, signed up and we've been doing coaching calls, getting them prepared. We've been doing one-on-one -on -one private coaching with them to ensure that they're ready. We've been doing swag check, uh, getting them mentally prepared for what to expect. It's been it's a, it's been a journey, but um, it's been really fun. And I want to give a shout out to uh, someone who the, the videographer who made this, by the way, he's an avid supporter of you, Mr. Lucario. And he found he found me to do videography with me and to shoot this video through a Miles Cunningham stream that we had back in November. Oh, so, so shout out to Ken, my videographer. So he's right here on the chat. Okay, Ken. So I want to give him a shout out as well for making this video. That's what's up. Shout out to Ken. That's what's going on. So, so guys, um, right now we, you know, we're gonna be here for a little bit, and the, the phone lines is up 646-481-3901, 646-481-3901. So you guys can call up, uh, ask Cam some questions, ask myself some questions, any questions that you have, and we'll you know talk a little bit. So we'll be here for another for like maybe 45 minutes to an hour. So call in if you guys want to get your questions answered. So we're talking about you know how to become a natural with women. So what's your what is your um like opinion on this or as far as like why certain guys have a lot of trouble and issues with this like what do you think can make a guy more naturally gifted when it comes to dealing with women what's your what's your thoughts on that okay so mr lucario that's a great question the first thing i want to state is that i was by no means a natural when i was younger i had some charm 
But Mr. O'Carr, I used to call into your show with Miles all the time with Kay Zaggins right. and everybody with Steve. And I had a lot of insecurities when I would call into the show and you guys helped me get to become more centered with who I am. So I want the audience to know right off the bat, I was no by, by any means born with like a tremendous amount of game. Mm. Uh, what got me to becoming more natural was realizing that, again, the game is not about women, right? Which you guys talk about all the mm. time and me feeling, okay, how can I, how, first of all, how can I be that man of value within myself? How can I honor myself? How can I feel as liberated and secure with who I am? So right. when I talk about certain things, I'm not going to feel uh, insecure or I'm not going to feel like I need to prove my worth to anybody else. Mm -hmm. My right. whole thing was about believing in who I was. And really, it was just conquering insecurities. That was the first step, Mr. Lacard, become a natural with women, was mm -hmm. conquering your insecurities. And then realizing that if a woman was not along the lines along the lines of what I was looking for, if she was not cooperative and she was not submissive of what I was looking for, then it's okay to let her go. Right. Because exactly. I was always concerned with like the outcome. I was concerned of making sure I was appeasing to the woman. I was mm. like, oh, I hope she likes me. That whole mindset that I had was terrible. Right. And um, and then when you're in the conversation with girls, my whole thing is like I tell my guys that are going to be coming to Vegas with me. It's like, listen, guys, when you talk to women, women are there to go to Sin City. They're not mm. looking for boyfriends. Mm. They're not looking for long-term relationships. They're looking right. for that sex. They're looking for some quick mm -hmm. hookups. They're looking for a fun time. That's you a fact. A vibe. Mm. That's a fact. There you go. <laughs> and that's what because I'm like, you know, a lot of times in Vegas, you know, there's there's so many women out there looking for a good time, trying to make shit happen. And and the thing I, I'll say is this: is that, you know, back in the day, they had this thing called pickup artists, right? So what pickup artists did, they were trying to teach guys who didn't know how to get girls. They they were trying to teach guys how to become natural with women. That's that was like the goal, really, what it was. You, you understand what I'm saying? But the thing is this is that one of the things that make you become natural with women is that you gotta, like you're saying, you have to understand yourself. Once you understand yourself and what you want, it's easier to interact with women because now you're interacting with women being authentic, which means you're being your natural self. And then so your natural self is the most attractive version of you. Not not the guy that you're trying to pretend to be, not the guy that your society told you to be, not the guy that, you know, you think you're supposed to be in order to, to, to uh, get women. It's your natural self, because then you're going to actually attract women who are really, really, really into you. And that's I think that's a, a big, um, you know, important part of making these things happen. Now, what, what's something that you think, because, you know, from your experience, when you're coaching these guys, what do you think one, one of the things that holds these guys back from? you know, getting women that they want or making anything happen? I would say that one of the biggest things that's holding guys back is really the fear of judgment. Mm. And they're like, I have one guy who is terrified of approaching. Uh, and one of the things like in our itinerary is that we're going to do approaches in Caesar's palace. And we're going to approach girls mm. in Planet Hollywood as well. Mm. And we want to go to high traffic areas because these are the kind of places where there's a lot of options for guys to like go and approach women. So there's no excuses like, Oh, there's not enough girls here, man. I can't do it. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, we're going to go to high traffic areas. And I think the biggest thing for them is that they're so concerned that the conversation has to be perfect. And I mm -hmm. tell these guys, like, listen, being a perfectionist is not within your identity. Right. right? And shout out to miles for the identity membership, right? A masculine identity membership, because mm -hmm. Guys who are trying to create the perfect outcome, they're trying to create the perfect conversation, the perfect flow. They're not even present in the moment, enjoying the conversation and enjoying the flow with the woman. They're just like, I hope like she likes everything I'm saying. And I hope I do this right. And I hope I do that right. Mm -hmm. um, but it's second nature. Like, look, I know when you're on the streets and you're doing your thing and you're talking to women, any kind of, let's say you placing her hand on her shoulder or you mm -hmm. put your, your, your hand on the small of her back and you bring her closer to you. It's, mm -hmm. it's natural. It's second nature to you. Right. It's like, it's like, it's like everything that you're doing is just, is it coincides perfectly with the words, with your rhetoric and your delivery. So mm -hmm. guys, they need to stop getting over the fact that everything has to be perfect because perfectionism does not exist. And that right. takes you away from your identity. Exactly. And there is no perfect thing to say. That's what, that's what guys got to understand. A lot of times you're looking for the perfect things to say, but what happens is the reason why you say things and it doesn't come across well or shit doesn't go the way you want it to go is because you're thinking too much and you're all in your head and you're not really being in the moment. So 
a lot of times when you're in the moment, which is what's going to happen is, is that if you're comfortable with yourself and you're comfortable saying what you say and you believe what you say, a lot of times the women feel it better. This is why, you know, you can say certain things and not be the best looking dude, or you can say certain things and not even be like the guy with the best mouthpiece. But if you're coming across real, then women could, they could, they could respect it. You understand what I'm saying? And, and so what happens is, is that, see, I always tell guys this, it's not hard to talk to women, right? What makes it hard is your expectation of what's supposed to happen when you talk to women, which causes you to start doing weird shit. Like you're hesitating, you're stumbling over your words. You're, you're, you're all over the place because your expectation of what you want to happen is stopping you from being in the moment and just letting shit flow, letting shit ride. You feel what I'm saying? And so that's, that's the thing, you know what I mean? And so like, go ahead, use it. Let's say something real yeah, quick. Mr. Lucario, when I would call into your show, guys, again, uh, to the audience watching this, I used to call Lucario's show all the time. And I'll sometimes just call in just to like say, you know, share my thoughts. But right. back in 2020 to 2021, it was every week call into the show and get my problems fixed. Mm. And I, what I, one thing I realized was that when you're in your insecurities, you're not even your identity. Because the right. insecurity is a false sense of who you are. So exactly. when a guy's trying to be a perfectionist, he's trying to like say the right delivery or the right pickup line. Mm -hmm. When guys ask me, yo, Cam, what's your pickup line? I'm like, hey, ladies, how's it going tonight? That's right. literally my pickup line. That's what's, all I do. What's going on with y'all, right? Yeah, Hold on, we got, we got uh, I think it's a monogamous player on the line. Monogamous player, what's going on? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, what's up, Mr. Lucario? And uh, sir, also, what's up to you, man? So so good to have you, man. And also, I donated. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, Thank brother. You, brother. So what's good with you? What's good with you? Man, chilling, man. Hey, man, I, all I want to say, man, it, it, this is a great topic. And just stemming from what you and Miles are talking about, about just understanding women, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes as a man, well, really all the time as a man, right? It's not about, under, it's not just about understanding women like you're trying to find a cheat code. It's really about understanding what type of women will be compatible to you. Right. And I think the, more, the, the one unnatural thing is, for example, if, if a guy goes to talk to a woman, right, and she gives him uh, uh, her number, right, and mm. he's trying to really hit her up, but she's not responding or she's not, you know, uh, being cooperative, right? Right. Then that, right, that should automatically show you that, okay, this is not the type of woman that, that should be, you know, a part of my program. Mm. See, a lot of guys be trying to get a woman to level five when the woman is not even passing level zero. Right. You see what I'm saying? That's the unnatural thing because you're trying to give a woman that should be at level zero, you're trying to unnaturally give her a, 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 a bonus point to be at level two or three or a higher level mm. when it's not supposed to be like that. That's why a lot of guys are having trouble with women or they're coming across women that they're saying that, uh, oh, women are like this and women are like that. Another thing, Mr. Carl, I don't like what guys do. Guys got a bad habit of generalizing women. I was mm. watching... I think it was yesterday's show, and I think it was a uh, young grandpa. Shout out to young grandpa. I remember right. he was saying he was in Dallas, mm. and he was saying that you know girls are different in Dallas versus girls that are different in Atlanta, right? Now, in some situations, you know, vibes gonna be different and stuff like that, right? But don't generalize women because there's really no way you can really generalize because if you're really out there, you will see that okay, it's really the same. Right. It just uh, might be a different environment, might be a different vibe, but it's really the same. And even what y'all was just saying, like a lot of guys. They be all in their head. And even sometimes for me, sometimes I be in my head. Or I have been in my head in the past, right? So when you're in your head, you're overthinking. It's not just even be me being in my head just about women, mm -hmm. but it's about life in general, right? But whenever I woke up and I wasn't in my head and I just enjoyed my day and I just was just me, I can see the effect that I have on other people. Right. So when you naturally just you, you don't realize the effect that you have towards other people. Mm -hmm. There's some women out there in my life, you know what I'm saying, in my past that genuinely like me. Right. It, it had nothing to do with my swag. It had nothing to do with my mouthpiece or whatever. It has everything to do with who I was. So if you just be yourself, you'll come across the women that 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 want to speak to you. And another thing you and Miles said, Mr. Lucario, is the best women to uh, mess with are the women that want to mess with you. Right. That's the natural thing, right exactly. there. Exactly. Whether that's short term or long term. That's what I, when I was telling y'all when I discovered y'all four years ago and I learned the vetting process, right. Every chick that was a part of my seat, I'm gonna be honest, Mr. Cario. The blessing is that at the end of the day, I end up having a, a beautiful woman that's soon gonna be my wife, and we have a good foundation, right? Mm -hmm. But even leading up to my woman, because I had a good vetting process and everything was absolutely natural, people don't realize when you have a, a plan and set, you can actually learn more from the plan. Right. So because I was the best version of me, and I was dealing with women that were showing me their best version, 
guess what? That actually prepared me for the relationship that I'm in now. Mm. So that's why it's very, very important to have a vetting process so you can get the best experiences so you can learn from those experiences and you can take what you learn to, towards something that might be long term right. down the line. Right. Not so as because I learned this from girl A and girl B, then I can I can apply this on girl C and girl D. Mm. You see what I'm saying? But that's because everything happened naturally. But then if I was still focused on one chick, not not focused on the women that want to fuck with me, but I'm focused on the woman that got a big ass or whatever, and it's not because of anything else, then that's what causes things to be unnatural. And that's when results become unnatural. But what is your take mm -hmm. on that, Mr. Lacario? And uh other guy, what's your name again? Grand Cam. Excuse me, Grand Cam. Yeah, Greg, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What, what should I take on that? Yeah. I mean, the, the thing is, is that, you know, what I, what I feel is that the mo the more natural you are, the more you get natural responses. So for example, yeah. if you're being the more fake you are, <laughs> the, the more bullshit you're going to get. So a lot of times, a lot of guys who complain about women using them for money or women playing games is because they're playing games or they're putting their money on the forefront. So this is why you're getting that response. Remember, I always tell guys, right. women follow you. So based off of what you're doing, that's the response you're going to get. But uh, but Grand Cam, what's your what's thoughts on that shit? Well, monogamous player, first of all, I, I appreciate all the input that you give on all of Lucario's uh, streams. I know you're hustling out there and listening to all the education. And you're, and you're, what I really appreciate about, appreciate about you is that you are always going to be a student of the game. Mm. And I feel like a lot of guys out there, they will reach a level – and they will stop listening to people that have given mm -hmm. have given them the wisdom. Like I listen to all the Sunday shows that Lucario has with the, the mm -hmm. whole panel. I still right. tune into Lucario and Miles. I still tune into like everybody's like shows to always keep educating myself. Right now, on what you were referring to as well, Monogamous Player. Like I love how you break down everything with structure, and that's mm -hmm. what I was personally lacking before I would get help from Mr. Lucario and everybody mm -hmm. else. Was that I had no freaking structure. Mm -hmm. I would just like think like, okay, just date, do this, do that, and then I always felt like I was literally a fart in the wind where right. wherever the wind blows, I would just go in that direction. Right. right. I was yeah. not, I had no structure. So identity. So structure is formed with identity. And once you have an exact, uh, a very accurate estimation of who you are, where it doesn't even come an estimate, it becomes like a very accurate outcome of who you believe you are. Mm -hmm. The way you explained mm -hmm. your structure is your own thing. Right. And then it's unique to you. And then every girl that you talk to wow. now can see if she wants to be part of that program or not. Right. That's a fact. Right. Real shit. Right. And that's true. Man, matter of fact, guys, I'm, I'm going to end it, end it with this, right? Here's when you have a program, right? You can actually inspire people to become better and you can actually become better, right? Mm. Because if your program is right, then the program, even though the girl's following your program, right? She, she, it, it, it's beneficial towards you too as well, right? Mm. One thing I want to say is there was one chick, right? That was right before my girlfriend. I was dating her right before my girlfriend. Everything ended peacefully because we was dating, you know, we was having fun while we was dating mm -hmm. and we was enjoying each other's time, right? Right. I saw her at one of my old partner's bachelor party, right? Maybe like a year ago. Mm -hmm. And me and her was just chopping up like, oh, man, remember when we dated? We really had a, a good time. And she said this. She said, I'm just being honest, Daniel. I really do appreciate it, the time that we dated because whether you know it or not, you actually put me out, put me on, on a lot of games. Mm -hmm. She said, you actually put me on a lot of games that I wasn't, I wasn't aware of, and I was able to take that with me and apply it in my life moving forward. Mm -hmm. So even what Miles was saying, when you have a – that's why you should always tell women, you might not be with me. There's a 99% right. chance that you're not going to be with me. But there's something that I can learn from the situation. That's something you can learn from the situation, right? Mm -hmm. So even what Miles was saying, he was saying when you have a structure in place, you're actually preparing women for the man that's for them. Right. And when you have a, a structure and you are – structuring things where women can follow you're actually preparing yourself for the woman that's supposed to be with you long term mm. so everything that we do is preparation for the future right that's a fact that's you real see what shit. i'm saying that's real so, shit that's all i want to say guys man a hey, great topic guys and even what you said uh uh sir i'm always a suit of the game because i even have to talk to my girl yesterday because of, of the teachings that miss lacaria and miles mm. uh teach even though i'm i'm an on-point guy right I come up short sometimes, mm, right? And mm. I had to realize that. So I had to have a conversation with my girl about past things I had to apologize about because I knew that, okay, this kind of, this could have hindered the relationship, but luckily she gave me grace for it. Right. You see what I'm saying? So even being on point, you can still come up short, meaning that it's still room to be learned. It's still room for learning. And I'm always in the room to learn. So thank y'all for the opportunity, guys. That's what's up. Appreciate, Appreciate you, my thank brother. You. All right. I think we got another call. Um, and guys, call in uh, 646-481-3901, 646-481-3901. So we got uh, 
941 on the line. 941, what's popping? Who this? Hey, yo, Lucario, this is the cat from uh, from the other day that was talking about the Applebee's joint. I wanted to give y'all an update. Okay, and, I don't, uh, but, but I don't even remember, but what, what I, happened? I remember I remember this guy. Yeah, this was on Sunday, the Sunday show, right? Oh, man, sip ass nigga. You remember. Okay, so what so what's going nah, on? Nah, I was just playing, I was just playing. But um before before I get into it, I want to make sure I donate. You take Zell? Um yeah, Zell. No, no, I take Venmo and, and Cash App, but don't worry about that. Go just go ahead, we get you later. Don't worry about it. All right, so I remember um I was coming at you about like what should I say to lay it down on shorty and y'all was like say what the fuck you said at applebee's and i said oh yeah once but another time i said oh shorty uh, i told her shorty i went to fuck and then she said i stay being honest i'm not interested mm -hmm. and you were just like man don't care about that just stick with the same program mm -hmm. and you were like stop you know stop being a pussy so i i y'all called me out i guess with that shorty i came at y'all about that because i already knew like y'all said i already knew that she wasn't gonna fuck with me mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like i already knew she right. was gonna fuck with me and that's why like it's like I came to y'all to try to figure out like how, what can I say to to lay it to uh to tell her like I want to smash, and the reason I guess I didn't say it is because in my mind I thought she was gonna reject me, mm -hmm. but really I should have just said, "Yo, let's smash from the get go instead of keep it on that lunch date, yo." Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is well, this is what we're trying to tell you, bro. Again, this is what we talk about when we talk about being natural, because you got to be upfront and honest about what you want and about what you're trying to do right so you don't waste time right. you feel what i'm saying but but uh grand camp what's, right. what's your thoughts on that shit though well first of all i want to give this caller props for even calling back to humbly uh announce like you know everything that you were sharing right now i mean it takes a lot of courage to do that and you know that you're in the face of like the, the public and the internet right now where people can judge you for that so the fact that you don't even care and you're sharing that and uh I, I like how this is conversation is going. So I just want to make sure I give you that, that praise and the props for that. I think ultimately, like when I, one thing I took away from that conversation on Sunday, when the whole panel was uh, talking to you, uh, when Lucari was, was sharing with you that, like, why, why even waste your time going on lunch when you want to just have sex with her? Right. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing I share with my clients as well. It's like a lot of guys will do all these, like, but they will, they, a lot of guys will make themselves, will make the situation more complicated than it should be. Right. And, and, it, and it's because that they're concerned about how the woman's going to react to them. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you're so in tune yeah. with who you are and you're so in tune with your identity, you don't even care about what the girl is going to say. Because one thing I always tell my clients, like I've had clients ask me, yo, Cam, how long do you wait to have sex with a girl? I'm like, look, at listen. I get laid on the first date and that's my tolerance. So if the girl's not having sex with me on the first date, I will literally cut her off unless there's like a legitimate reason where right. she's like, Hey, listen, even though we're not gonna have sex tonight, I want to have sex with you tomorrow, but I know for sure we're going to have sex on the second date. Then maybe mm -hmm. I will consider it. Mm -hmm. But majority of the time girls yeah. don't speak to me like that. Right. It's going to be like, I usually get not sex. On the first date. Not, it's like, I don't know. Like I just, I guess I, I fuck with you on what you're saying. I really do because you internally believe it. Like, mm -hmm. I know, like, if I don't get it by the second, I'm not fucking with Shorty. Like, I definitely did delete her number and I deleted the feed and everything. I, I deleted the uh, the number and the feed. So if she does ever hit me up, I'm going to hit her with the who's this. I won't even know who it is because I don't remember numbers like that. But, like, I, I guess I'm not really there yet when it comes to if you ain't hitting me with the A, B, you ain't going to see D type mm -hmm. shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm not there yet, but I see y'all really like. So what? Why, why, do you, why do you feel like, know. hold on. Why do you feel like you're not there yet? Why can't, why, why do you feel like you can't tell a woman what you want? Because even though I'm about to bun, I find myself wasting a lot of time. Not, I mean, I, I'd say like that. I find myself wasting a lot of time and being okay with not getting the bun. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But not without charging it to the game, really. You know what I'm saying? So, so, it's like, so, I'm what, not, so, I'm hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, anything like that. But it's like, hold on. So, so, let me ask you a like question. I take the back seat. Right. I and, wait. It's almost like I'm waiting. Right. So, hold on. Let me ask you this question. So, what do you really want, though? So, like, let's say with this girl, what did you really want? You wanted to to hook up, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So now, so now, what we're telling you is, and this is the this is the key. You have to focus on what you want. Right. And not be wavering on it. So right now you're sort of wavering, which is why you're like, well, I could kind of get it or maybe sort of or wait. And therefore, the reason why you're not getting it is because you're not strong in your stance in getting it. Do you understand? So, uh, mm -hmm. for example, yeah. if yeah. I if I if I had a um, 
let's say I wanted you to buy, let's say like, I wanted you to buy sneakers, right? If I, if, if I, if I send you to Walmart where they have everything in there and I say, Hey, pick something, go pick something to buy. You might buy sneakers, but you might buy a whole bunch of other shit. You understand what I'm saying? But if I literally mm-hmm. tell you, hey, go buy sneakers and I send you to fucking a Foot Locker, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 99.9% <laughs> chance you're going to come back with some sneakers because we're clear, concise, and we're going in the direction of where what you want or what I want is happening. So right now, you're just sort of all over the place. Like you want something, but your execution is all over the place. You see what I'm saying? So let me tell you, let me tell you what, from a caller's point of view, right? Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, like, for instance, that video that you, you and Miles did in New York. Mm. Let me tell you my point of view, and I'm pretty sure a lot of callers can pick up on this, right? Mm. When we ask you, when you give us the game, like you give me the game now, mm. we hear it. We hear the be direct. And we know y'all niggas ain't no pussy. We know the way y'all talk. We, You know what I mean? Shit like that, right? Mm. But when we see y'all talking, you, it's like you guys still get that message across, but you guys don't say like, yo, I'm going to break you down or let me just get it popping. Like you guys say other smooth shit that just almost leads to it from our point of view. But I guess in your mind, what you're saying is exactly what you want to say, which gets you exactly what you want to get. Mm. And, and which is what you're breaking down to me. But when we see professionals like you and, and miles and, and, and uh, uh, Steve Dean do it, we see just charisma game. Like the way you ask questions, the way you, pull people's interest the way you get people to respond is different than us thinking that you're just telling a chick yo um I, I like you look good let's get it popping you know what i'm saying that's what you want i'm with it let's do it you know what i mean mm-hmm. i we, we get we get we, i i i'm just gonna talk to myself i get that but i don't but it's like i when i see y'all do it in, like when i see my mac my, my niggas that are max when i see them do mm-hmm. it in, in like in, in, in public mm-hmm. it doesn't come out like that but you could you could see the sexual tension in the interaction, right? But that's but because, like, but but call it. This is like, this is what we're trying to get you to understand, though. This is what we're trying to get you to understand. Like like myself and Grand Cam are two different guys. But what happens is is that like when Grand, when Grand, when Grand Cam said, "Listen, I'm trying to smash on the first date. This is what it is." That's oh, yeah, coming Grand from Cam. him because that's him, and it's really who he is and what he's about and what he's structured in his situations with dating. So when so when he says that or he's he's interacting with a woman or whatever he says and does come up, it comes across that way. So we're not telling you to be us and say or do things like us. We just giving you an example of how we do it so that you can figure out how you do it. That's all we're saying. But we're, sometimes we're, that's we're so doing. important. Caller, I have to I have to caller. I have to respond. Hey, to what you said. Caller, this is extremely, extremely important what Mr. Lakari said. So remember, like, I don't know if you've been tuning into the show since the beginning of this uh, of this episode, but I told, I announced to everybody that by no means I was a natural. By no means I was a natural. By no means I was a smooth player type guy. Like, I was still getting girls, but it was very inconsistent, and I was mm. extremely insecure. Now, mm. what got me to, so when I would when I would hear Lakario talk on the show, and when I would call in, just like you would, you're calling in right now, I used to call in the Lakario show all the time. When Mm. he would tell me how to communicate, I wouldn't say, okay, I'm going to replicate and emulate exactly what Lucario says. Mm. What I would do is I would internalize the message and then I would make it unique to who I am based on my grand cam identity, right? Mm -hmm. And then one thing I teach to my clients is that there's sexual affirmations that you can give yourself because a woman like Steve, look, Steve, the Dean says all the time, a woman has two pussies, Mm. the one between her ears and the one between her legs. And the one between her ears is the most important thing. Mm. And when you're talking to women in seduction and just non-intimate conversations, you're still diving deep in the woman's mind. Right. You're really, you're, if you want to have like deep conversations with a woman and not be these like surface level type people, then you have to come up with thought provoking questions. There's this technique in sales and business. It's called the doctor approach. So mm. when a woman, like you ask a woman, where do you want to travel? And she says, I want to go travel to Thailand. You ask mm. her why Thailand? Then she says, Oh, it's because of the food. And it's because of like the people are friendly. Well, what is it about the food that intrigues you so much? Well, I love the flavors. I love this. I love that. Oh, so you're the kind of person that loves like noodles and you love like, you know, different kind of dishes. And she's like, yeah. And you say, okay, so where do you imagine yourself eating this kind of food when you're in Thailand? Mm-hmm. Do you want to have it in Phuket? Do you want to have it in Bangkok? Do you want to have it in like P- Pattaya? Like you start getting deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And then it gets into the core of the woman. So now you understand what drives her 
passionately. Mm-hmm. And right. why Thailand? Why not Germany? Why not any other country in the world? Good information, right? <laughs> exactly. So when you get more information, caller, check this out too. One thing I teach in my to my clientele is this mentality called I am sex mentality. And I am sex mentality is this. Anything I do is fucking sexy. You know that future song with Jerry the Young Thug? I love it. That song, Way Too Sexy. You guys got to look at the lyrics of Way Too Sexy. He says, I'm too sexy for this world. I'm too sexy for your girl. I'm too sexy for everything. This hat, swag. This sweatshirt, swag. Anything Mm -hmm. I do is swag. The way I hold my phone, the way I talk to people, Mm -hmm. everything is goddamn sexy. And -hmm. when you portray that and project that collar to the woman, you don't have to try hard. You don't have to use pickup. Exactly. I could just say, hey, what's up, girl? How are you doing? And she's immediately going to say, yo, who the hell is this guy? I want to talk to mm-hmm. him. Right. Exactly. Because that's mm-hmm. coming from that's coming from the source, which is you. This is what we try to this is what you're telling caller. So you're looking at it like, damn, but you guys know how to do this. You know how to do it, too. You're just not allowing yourself to do it because you said I'm not ready yet. So you're basically telling yourself you're not ready to do it. So you have to tell yourself you are and then you will. Do you see Facts. this? You understand that? Facts. Yeah, I definitely. Yeah, I, I definitely get that for sure. All right. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, no, nah, like I, I hear that because um, I fucked with that too. Like I use this analogy that my life is a movie. You mm-hmm. feel me? And if you're in a movie, you know what I mean, and you don't have a remote, right? right. Would you um be able to sit through the boring parts? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or like, would you be able to sit through your? Would Would you want to? Like fast forward it, or would you be able to watch it? Like, like don't be boring. Like, if you're gonna be in a movie, you want to be on screen, you want to be on play. You gotta live your life. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, you gotta just do shit. You know what I mean? Interact. You know, uh, however you want. Like, you, like you're the you're the main you're the main character. Is what I'm saying. Like, right. the main character is the main character. Like, mm-hmm. right. And yeah, and don't and don't be scared. That's what we, and that's what we're trying to tell you. Because what it is is the reason why you're saying you're not there, you're not ready yet, is because you're 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 scared of yourself. Meaning, you're scared of seeing what's happening and so meaning that you're scared to see yourself in these situations because you're scared of the outcomes and you're scared of the outcomes because you're not actually like you're, you're not comfortable with who you are so so what we're saying is just like when great Grant ham was saying is that everything is sexy so no matter what i do it's coming from that place so then you're not thinking oh what do i what should i do what should i say whatever cuz whatever you're saying and doing is what it's supposed to be and that's what we're trying to get you to that point so you want to you want to get out of your own way like what's goes in your way is your insecurities your doubts your fears you got to get all of that shit out the way and then once you get that out the way then what happens is cuz this check this out you know the reason why most guys are scared of rejection and I talked about this before the reason most guys are scared of rejection is because they're looking for the woman not to reject them so that they can feel that they're okay. You understand? But what happens is, mm-hmm. is that if you're the if you're the event, if you're the shit, if you're the everything, then there's nothing outside of you you need. So when you're doing what you're yeah. doing, you're just doing what you're doing because that's what you do. And then whatever happens, happens. But the problem is, is that mm-hmm. most guys are looking for the girl to want to fuck with them in order for them to feel like they're okay, to feel like they're the shit, to feel like you're supposed you to feel like you're that crazy cycle nigga from yesterday. No, and I'm, I'm just saying, that one. no, I'm just saying in general, what I'm saying is before you go to the girl, you should be at a 10 while you're talking to the girl, you should be at a 10. And after you talk to girl, the girl, you should be at a 10, no matter what happens. That's what we're talking about. Bars, bars. Yeah. And, and color. Check this out. Well, if you, if you've been watching, if you've been listening to Lakara for a while now, color, he always yeah. talks about how the deep, the game is very deep. You know, you know, another profound affirmation that you can give to yourself besides I am sex, right? Everything's sexy that you do, right? I'm your liberator. So you understand that women are very insecure. And mm. if you want to liberate a woman, you have to be liberated in who you are. Mr. Right. Lucario has t-shirts that says like, you know, the, the whole submissive thing. Like, I like submissive women. Right. That's a very liberating mindset. And 99% of guys, oh, with yeah. the exception of the bad boy membership people who like watch Lucario and stuff, they mm. won't ever wear a shirt like that. I right. would rock that. I like submissive women yeah. shirt in the yeah. gym in yeah. Los Angeles. I'll be wearing them, them shirts. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, right. So we're trying to get you to that point. So we're trying, and to, we're trying to get you to understand that. Like, yo, I, matter of fact, I saw you wear one of the shirts and I'm like, why is he wearing that shirt? <laughs> This guy's funny. <laughs> so, so caller, all we're, all we're saying to you, brother, is this, man. 
is really, really just tap into who you are. Don't be afraid to be who you are, because then once you embrace yourself and once you accept yourself, you're not looking for acceptance from anyone else, which means you're not looking for the girl to say yes. Whether she says yes or no is of no consequence, because the only thing you're doing is being you. And by being you, you're going to get whatever you want. That's that's the part that a lot of guys don't don't understand. What what what's what's going to happen is going to happen because you're that guy. So it's going to happen regardless. So I don't need for this woman to say yes or no. It doesn't matter. It's going to happen regardless. It already anyway. happened. Exactly. It already happened because you're you. This is what we're trying to tell you. All you're doing is you're creating situations for it to occur. That's it. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? That's yeah. it. Sure, sure. Caller, yes. have fun, man. Caller, have fun with the interactions. Like, I still just like mess around with chicks to see what kind of reaction they're gonna get on me. Like, I was mm -hmm. in Dallas this past weekend, and I remember there was this girl walking around. She was walking with her ice cream, and I was about seven feet away from her. I'm like, yo, that ice cream looks super delicious. What is that? And she's like, oh, it's like, it's like vanilla ice cream with mm -hmm. like a macadamia cookie on it. And I just walk up to her. I'm like, yo, this shit looks fucking fire. And she's not threatened by my presence. I'm literally like inches away from her. And then I was like, yo, that tastes really, does that taste good? She's like, oh yeah, it's really good. I'm like, yo, mm. can I have a little bit of it? And she doesn't know who the fuck I am. And she's like, sure. And I'm like, hey, how about you spoon feed that to me? And exactly. she's like, sure, I'll spoon feed it. So she literally is spoon feeding me her ice cream and a piece of her cookie, putting it in my mouth. And I'm like, yo, in my head, I'm thinking like, I've only talked to this girl for 20 seconds at most. Mm. And again, it's like, I want to see how far I can like have fun with this girl. Like how willing is she to like feed me? feed a stranger her dessert that she paid out of her own pocket mm. so have fun call her have a right, good time right. man exactly i call her well, yes, too. yes sir well we, we appreciate you uh calling in man but yeah keep yeah. doing your thing bro and don't be don't be scared to let these chicks know what you want man appreciate the call mm -hmm. all right so guys call in we got another maybe 15 20 minutes uh so if you guys want to call in call in if you have a question put a cue in the chat and we'll get to your questions shout out to coach um uh you know justin in the building in the chat Shout out to you. Um, so uh, who else said this? Um, the Riz said, hey, he said, what, what is a high traffic area? Yeah, he was referring to my term uh, that I was saying for high traffic areas in Vegas. So like a high traffic area in the context of Las Vegas is any hotel that's popular, like the mm. Wynn Hotel, Bellagio, Caesars Palace, Planet Hollywood, any hotel that has a lot of women that are walking around. Excuse me. You can go to, um, you can go to any hotel that has a lot of shopping so mm. I don't know where this guy, what area this guy lives in, but like in, in California, walking around, like being in Santa Monica, um, if you're in Los Angeles area, in San Diego, Gaslam District. So you got to like go to the downtown areas. That's where you can get some high traffic areas of women that are always walking around. Right. Um, I think we got monogamous player on the, on the line again. What's going on? Just, just say one thing. You said something that you really hit the nail on the coffin, right? And you were just basically talking about when – you know, just always feeling, you know, feeling sexy, right? And basically what you're saying is you have to feel positive about yourself, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Everything that you do, it has to be positive. Right. I just want to tell everybody that's listening to it. A big part of my game, right? Everybody's game is different. A big part of my game of the reason why I got a lot of women is because I'm always a, I'm always a person that got positive vibes. Mm -hmm. That's what draws women around. Sometimes we don't even have to talk to dudes to understand that oh his vibe is off right or he got a negative vibe or whatever mm -hmm. even when you talk to mr car and i'm the one that y'all did that video right because that, that reminded me of me and my best friend and how we all with people right right mr Carr, when you and miles was walking around miami it didn't matter the result y'all vibe was positive mm -hmm. so exactly. even some of the girls are saying you still got some laughs you still got a good conversation you still, you know what I'm saying? Everybody was positive, mm -hmm. and y'all don't. And people don't understand that. See, when you, when, when you yourself, guys, understand this. You don't know who's watching. Mm -hmm. Right. When you yourself. Right. So when you being positive, you don't know what girl is feeling you. I didn't have any instances where I'm just being myself, and I found I didn't really say nothing, sir. I didn't spit no game, and I'm just being positive. I'm just being myself. And happy just being a guy that's willing to give positive vibes. Mm. So that's a big part of game, being positive with yourself. And in return, you can be positive towards other people and they'll be positive towards you. Right. So a big part of game is positive vibes. Real talk, I'm real talk. I'm right here, are already defeated, are already ready to snap. Some guys want to hop the chick, but they want, they want bad, they, they want result away from cussing the chick out. Mm. If a girl say no, they ready to cuss the chick out. That's not positive vibes. Right. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So be positive, regardless of whatever. You, my, 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 you know how many times 
I just smashed girls and said no at first. Mm-hmm. And I was just being positive. And I was like, okay, cool, cool. And they came back around one the fuck with a nigga. Right. Not real shit. It's because of my response. You see what I'm saying? But if I was like, fuck you, bitch, da da da. That's why you da da da. She ain't gonna fuck nothing. Right. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> but you positive, you never know what could happen. That's I literally had girls that said no in the past that said yes in the future. Mm-hmm. Literally. And I know you experienced that before, Mr. Right. Mario. But Mr. But Grand Cam, I ain't trying to hold y'all up, but I'm glad that you said that about feeling positive about yourself. Exactly. Because that can Thank take you. you a long way. Thank y'all for the opportunity. That's what's up, man. Appreciate you, the call, brother. So, guys, the call the number. I saw some people in the chat. for the number. The number is 646-481-3901. 646-481-3901. Um, I saw 571 calling. You can call back and we could get it going. Let me see what's up with some of these questions. So it says, do you guys believe in meditation uh, being helpful uh, when it comes to game? Um, I, I mean, I do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I definitely do. Um, but I think um, a lot of people have uh, the wrong idea sometimes about meditation. They think it's about like, you know, floating in the air and doing a bunch of mystical shit. All meditation really is about focus and, con- and concentration and just being in the moment and being aware of what's going on in your surroundings. But Grand Cam, what's your thoughts on that? So I, I one of my lectures that we had, um, my, my other retreat uh, in Labor Day weekend of last year, mm-hmm. I, I mentioned that a lot of guys will rely on meditation, ice cold plunge baths and mm-hmm. you know, cold showers and all these other things and self-development right. books to get them to where they want to be. Now, mm-hmm. If you so here's the thing, I was a self development advocate for a very long time, and I still am, right? But right. what really got me to getting to my identity was personalized coaching, calling mm. into the show, understanding mm. like why I was lacking in a lot of like departments of my life. Because the thing is, if you if you think about it, like yes, meditation helps you with concentration. There's nothing wrong with meditation. There's nothing wrong with ice cold plunge baths. But if you use it to like get to the root cause of the clearing trauma or minimizing the impact of insecurities in your daily life, mm. it's not going to get you to where you want to go. That's why a coach like Mr. Lucario is mm-hmm. extremely beneficial or a coach like me where we help you identify the source, the root cause of as to why you are where you are. Because what happens is like Mr. Lucario guys can break down your problems very well. Mm. You hear when Mr. Lucario brings up analogies, he brings up metaphors. Right. So then you start to understand his thought process and you're getting into the mind of Mr. Lucario. Mm. And I do the same thing as well. I'm very analytical. And then I always like think about like, okay, here's the surface. I I'm, I'm scared of women. Okay. Mm. Let's break it down. Why are you scared of women? Right. And why and how and what and why and when. Mm-hmm. Right. And the deeper and deeper, and deeper it gets. Then when you complement that with meditation or mm-hmm. cold showers and exercise and eating, right. Mm. Now you're going to excel much faster because that- those things just, just complement your identity better, but you cannot use meditation only to get to the core of your identity. You need one of us to help you out with that. That's a fact. So let's go to uh, seven seven three two seven three two. What's popping? Who this? What's good? It's Rashawn from Jersey. I donated. Rashawn, what up, bro? What's going on with you, man? And uh, and five seven, we gonna get to you right after. Uh, what's going on with you, man? Yo, Lakar, you. Uh, well, first first thing first, I'm gonna end up at the uh, seminar. Game King. That's uh, is up. Two. That's is up. Uh-huh. That's uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's is up. So what's going on? Second thing was really caught my attention. I've been meaning to call you about this. You said that uh, you lost your job, so you mm-hmm. end up having to resort to selling CDs, mm-hmm. and with that, you were able to pay your rent every month. Mm-hmm. Now, believe it or not, I saw selling CDs as some of these black pill niggas see cold approach it. I didn't mm-hmm. think you could sell a CD that nobody listened to. Right. So I was, I was very, <laughs> I was very impressed. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I, I bring that up because I'm curious of, is it a process where you have to convince them to buy it or like, do they just, okay, I'll give it a shot. So I'll give you the money. Or is mm-hmm. it like some type of sympathy that they have for you? Or they're like, okay, I feel mm-hmm. bad for like how, how does that work? And I'm gonna hang up because I got shit to do. Yeah. That's all I wanted to know. All right, cool. Yeah, basically, basically is is really the number one thing is just me putting it, putting myself Ooh. out there. You know what I'm saying? That's what you gotta understand. Is you putting yourself out there and you putting yourself out there. And 517, call back because we'll get to you right now after this. Be us us putting ourselves out there. It's the same concept of anything else. When you put yourself out there, you put yourself in situations for opportunities 
to be presented to you because you're out there in the situation. That's how a lot of things happen where you meet certain people, you get yourself involved in certain things, and then it snowballs from there. But part of it is actually putting yourself out there. So it's you putting yourself in position for opportunities to happen in those situations for you to benefit from. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it is. That's real shit. Um, so, uh, so guys call up, uh, 646-481-3901, 646 Uh, so this question says, how do you have influence over her? Uh, so basically the way you have influence over a woman is that she just has to recognize who you are and then become part of what you're about. That's what it is. She attaches to what you're about. She starts to like what you like. She's doing certain things because she sees that you're doing it and she wants to be a part of it. But also, that also comes with the fact that she sees you as somebody she wants to attach to. You understand? This is you're just that that guy uh, within itself where she's like, man, you know, I want to be a part of his program. He looks like fun. He's somebody that, you know, uh, I want to, just like you were saying, you were with the girl with the ice cream. A girl like that, because she even did that, she's probably like, oh, let me, I want to know more about him. And then when she knows more about you, she goes into Grand Cam's world. And then now she's all about what you're about. And that's just how it goes. But uh, 571, what's going on? Hey, what's up, Lucario? What's up, uh, Coach Grand Cam? How are you guys doing? Chilling, chilling. Good, what's up? Thank you. Awesome, awesome. I donated. Uh, Appreciate it. Yeah, my name's Dennis. I'm from DMV. Uh, I just want to say, um, I want to ask Coach Grand Cam one question. Mm. Uh, what was one of your breakthroughs in learning game? Wow, good like, question. What was like some thought or thing you went through that really started changing everything for you? That's a great question. So I uh, here's the answer to this. So I grew up in a Middle Eastern family. I'm from the Persian culture, from the country of Iran, but I'm born in America, right? One of the biggest things that I realized, man, was that uh, so in in the Iranian culture, we are we are pretty much programmed. And, and, and we're pretty much programmed to appease to our parents. Like, and this is also found in Indian families, like Asian families to like, you know, be this hard worker, be a doctor, lawyer, engineer, like these kind of like uh, positions. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I, I wanted to break out of was like, yes, I'm proud to be an Iranian American, but I'm not, but that's not my identity. Cameron mm -hmm. is the identity. Grand Cam is the identity. Right. Mm -hmm. So before culture, before being anything else, like working at a certain job or having my master's degree, that doesn't define who I am. So when I would call into Lucario and Steve's show all the time, I would bring up my accolades. And the first thing that Steve would do would invalidate and discredit all of it. Not like saying mm -hmm. that, oh, you didn't work hard for it. But he's like, what does that have to do with you being a man? Mm -hmm. he's like, what does you being Iranian have to do with you being a man? And I thought about it and I was like, holy crap. Now, this is where the breakthrough comes in. The breakthrough came in where... I would call into the show and I remember there was like Iranian girls that my parents would try to set me up with. God bless them. But these girls that they were trying to set me up with, they were not the type ideal type. And they were like, they were, it, it was too much. Like I would just try to please what my parents wanted me to do. Mm. And I've been under this, like, and that, and that trickled to other areas of my life as well. So what ended up happening was like, I was just so concerned. Like, am I making my parents happy? Am I making grandma happy? Am mm -hmm. I making grandpa happy? Am I making other relatives in my family happy? And then the more I realized that I was lacking identity and lacking structure, that's when I realized that that was my breakthrough right there. I was like, you know what? Enough is enough. I'm sick of this shit. I'm not going to be a people pleaser anymore. I'm not going to seek validation from anybody, from family, friends, women, nobody anymore. Mm -hmm. And I'm not seeking anyone's approval. I'm sick of this. Right. I've been a slave my whole fucking life and I'm mm -hmm. over it. Mm -hmm. And the realization is the breakthrough. So when I'll call into Lucario's show, I will get a bit of a breakthrough. Then the more I called into the show, I got more breakthroughs. And then I realized it finally hit me. And I remember like with 1950, we had a really deep conversation on the phone one time, Mr. 1950, shout out to him. Congrats and to he, yeah, he woke my ass up like significantly on a, on a certain moment of my life where I was like really stressed out. And, um, now, guys, like if you go on my Instagram, right, like literally on my Instagram, you'll find half naked women and me pictures with all these girls all over my, my page. Right. Mm -hmm. And my parents and my relatives, again, God bless all of them, but they are not on the same program that Grand Kim is. And they have mm -hmm. been giving me so much shit and friends mm -hmm. have been giving me so much shit. Family friends have been giving mm -hmm. me so much shit about it. You know That's what? I don't fucking care because this is my life. I'm going to do things the way I want to do. And I'm done. <laughs> Yes, I'm talking about it. Love it. 
I love it. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, wow. I realized, I realized, caller, that I'm going to die when I die, but I'm going to remember my legacy was doing it the way I wanted to do it. Just like Frank Sinatra, I did it my way, baby. And mm -hmm. I'm proud of that. Damn fucking proud of that. That's what's up. That's a wow, fact. Man, that's, thank that's you for that up. answer, man. Uh, I got one more question. Alan. I know you guys are trying to head off. No, no, go you ahead. You go. Me asking. Um, so I'm actually trying to get into the space and realm of like actually teaching the stuff myself. Like I was on the bad boy membership mm. and I've learned to, like you said, you took the information and you made it yours and you interpreted it your way. Uh, do you have any advice for upcoming uh, influencers uh, Coach Grant Kim. Oh, thank you for the question again. Um, I think definitely, Lakari, I would love to hear your your opinion on this too. So, my opinion uh, on up and coming uh, content creators and influencers. So, first thing I would do is find yourself a mentor. Uh, contact one of us to definitely help you out, or anybody on that Sunday panel that is that is relatable to you the most, right? Mm -hmm. And ask for help. Be humble. Uh, lose any kind of uh, just disarm yourself from any kind of uh, um, barriers to to having an open mind. So when I would come to Lakari's show, there would be moments like when Steve was on there, right? Like Steve and I, we would have a little bit, we would butt heads sometimes, but it was never in a way where I'll get emotional and angry and I'll just not give him an outburst and say F you to him. I never did that. Mm -hmm. I would just try to understand why he's being harsh to me, right? Mm -hmm. Because I wasn't used to that. I was used to like usually just having like, you know, my mentors being softer on me. But keep an open mind, uh, get rid of any kind of like uh, obstacles that will hold you back from being open to learning. So a mentor is extremely important because what a mentor does, see, this is why when Mr. Lucario says, get on the bad boy membership, mm -hmm. um, you know, join my retreat. What we're doing is we're shortcutting your life of insecurities and trauma so you can be abundant ASAP. Like, why the hell would you not want to do that? Exactly. Right? Like, what's the, what's the wait? Why do you want to jerk around and wait for another 10 years of your life? Or another five months of your life, right? Right. Shout out to Miles in the building. Miles in the building. Shout out to Miles in the building. Now that's a fact. And I, and I would also say this too is is this right? Is that uh you know you want to you want to talk about what you love because then that's going to make you motivate you to keep doing it. But also if you're giving informational advice, like myself and Grand Cam, we give informational advice, right? Talk about what you know. And so what it is is that. Don't talk about what you don't know. So even if you're talking about things you know, but there's something about the topic or the niche you're in that you don't know, don't act like you don't know it. Just say, hey, I don't really know that right now, but I could get back to you or I'll, I'll look you know, more into that. And the reason why I say that is because I remember when I, when I started uh, coaching, when I started doing this, it was in, back in 2007, 2008, and I was in my mid twenties or whatever. And there was a lot of things that I knew but there were certain things that I didn't know. So I always, I always talked about only what I knew. And if I talked about something else that I heard, I would say, oh, so I heard from so-and-so they were saying this about this. And then I learned more on my own. And then I just still talk about what I know. You see what I'm saying? So even if there's something I don't know, I'll be like, no, I don't, I don't really know about that. I got to get back to you or I got to do more research on that. Oh, I got to talk to some more people to get more information. And the reason why I say talk about what you know is because the people who are listening to you and trying to learn from you, right, they want, they may not know what you know, so they're trying to learn from you. And if you talk about things you don't know, then what you're doing is you're really, you're really messing them up for the, for the long term because mm -hmm. you're saying things that you don't know to other people who are trying to learn from you. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So like yeah. growth wise, it's best to just let them know, hey, I this kind of realm of information, mm -hmm. I don't know too much about it. So I'll get back to you. Right. That. Exactly. Exactly. But then also talk about what you know, because what you know is information somebody else might not know. And then you can help them with that. You see what I'm saying? Uh, okay. All right. Caller. I appreciate Caller. that so much. Caller. Grand Ken. Yo, caller, really quickly before you go, I just wanted to ask you this: Do you feel com do you feel a hundred percent confident on a on a personal level of who you are? Maybe not a hundred percent, but yeah. do you feel very confident of who you are as a man? Yes, I do. Okay, because there's two kinds of insecurities in this life: there's personal insecurities and business insecurities. Mm -hmm. So right now, if you feel like your personal insecurities are solid, like you mean you've minimized the impact it has on your everyday life, the next thing for you to conquer is business insecurities. Mm -hmm. So. Do you feel comfortable, caller, charging high prices for clients? Um, I don't feel comfortable with that. 
Okay, so that's a business and security. So what you need to do is this concept called reverse engineering. So what, let's say you want to charge a high price. Give me give me a number you want to charge right now to a client if you if you had the courage to do it. Like a high price. Uh, like uh, fifty on some type of work. I would think of fifty dollars. Yeah, fifty bucks. For I don't know what kind of service I'm providing, like information or like what. Okay, wait, but you don't have an idea yet. You don't have a value proposition of what no, you're going to offer. Mind, like a business aspect but we didn't really get into that detail are you doing b2b or b2c do you know what that is I, i'm sorry i'm not completely like um um uh, business savvy on everything so i don't okay. want to dive into that kind of no. so so, so thank you for being honest no thank you for being honest by this by the way like the fact that you're not getting like defensive so b2b means business to business and b2c means business to consumer so what lucario and i do is b2c business to consumer clients need our help we help them with coaching right so what you got to figure out is what is your identity in your business you know how you how we're talking about personal identity now it's time for you to conquer your business identity what is your value proposition look up this thing caller uh really this is my last thing i'm going to say about this Look up on Google search right now, open up a tab and type in business model canvas. Mm, see, okay, I get right? a lot I'll of game today. Shit, I get a lot of game today. Yeah. Look it up business model <laughs> canvas. They have value proposition, your your channels, your mm. customer segments, your financial, re- like your revenue streams. It's going to give you a whole layout exactly where to start mm. and how to build your business right there. But most important, you got to figure out, are you B2B or are you B2C? Uh, what makes you the expert in your field and think wild here. Don't be, don't limit yourself. Think mm. what makes you wild and, uh, oh, excuse me, what makes you uh, an expert in the field. And then you can think, focus on marketing and mm. business management operations and hiring people later down the road. First focus on business identity and then everything will start to come up more smoothly for you. Right. See, again, right. thank heavy. you so much. That's what's up, man. We appreciate the call, my brother. See, I get some heavy ass game today. I get business game and everything. So guys, we about to we about to wrap it up real quick. Hold on, let me um let me see some of these questions. Let's go through some of these questions real quick and then we're gonna wrap this up. Um so this one says, uh, is it okay to ask a girl for her number if you don't use social media? Um, I'm trying to challenge my fear of approaching. Well, yeah, it doesn't matter. If you don't use social media, you have no social media, then let's exchange information or here, take my number, hit me up and we'll make something happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, I, I would. I Living in solitude, I would recommend you get an Instagram ASAP. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why you don't want to use social media because social media, honestly, it's, think about it this way, guys. Like Instagram, dating apps, in-person interactions are, are revenue streams to meet women, quote unquote revenue streams, right? So if you close one channel of making money in a business, like, then you're essentially closing a whole layer of clientele right there. Some mm-hmm. guys want online coaching. Some guys are going to the Game Kings, uh, do, uh, the seminar, right? Mm-hmm. So Lakari does online coaching. He does in-person seminars. He does private right. coaching. Like, why would you close yourself off? So get an Instagram, man. And, mm-hmm. and contact one of us to build up like a, a very valuable Instagram where you don't need to have a badass lifestyle where you're buying fancy cars or expensive clothes. But with the resources that you have, you can make a pretty solid Instagram. It's not that hard. You just got to learn the skills to do it. Real shit, real shit. Um, so this one says, uh, would you be open to having guests on the Sunday panel? Yeah, we could do that. We do that sometimes on the blue. Where we have like the, you know, uh, we, we went to the blue, do the night ones, or we do ones where we, we invite people on. So Grand Cam should get on one of the joints. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. That's an honor. That is an <laughs> honor. Thank pretty you. Dope. That'd be pretty dope. So we'll definitely try to make that happen sometime in the future. Um, so this one says... So, Carl, what email do I have to email you about a book that I want to buy from you? Well, just email me at uh, Mr. Locario at gmail.com uh, or just go straight to Mr. Locario.com and get the, you know, go to the store page. Just say, can, can, if you start a YouTube, is it best to set up as a business too? Well, I mean, I'll say you want to use YouTube to, to, to try drive traffic to your own website or your businesses. You know what I'm saying? But I wouldn't necessarily, um, you know, you can make money off YouTube, but I wouldn't necessarily use YouTube as a business because if YouTube take your channel off, then your business is going. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> you're finished, so you got to or you got to start over. You know what I'm saying? What's your thoughts on that, Greg? Yeah. Uh, can you can if you start a YouTube, is it best to set up a business too? Okay. Well, first before you start it, well, I, I guess he's asking like, should I do? I want to start a YouTube channel, and should I make a business out of it? Right. Gotcha. Uh, 
what I would do, like Mr. Lakari said, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. I would start the business first and then create content from YouTube. And I would also post on TikTok. I would post on Instagram. Right. I would post on every platform because, if, again, one of those uh, social media giants close your channel, you're screwed. But you don't necessarily like I want a lot of guys think that you need like a huge subscriber count or a huge mm. following um, to to make money. You really don't like I. Right. Uh, if you guys go on my website, you can see how much price, uh, how much money I charge for my prices, and I do really well. Mm. Um, and uh, you know, a lot of guys like you'll just to let you guys know, like on YouTube, there are guys who have like 300, 500,000, 1 million subscribers, and they don't make jack shit. Exactly, I mean, that's a fact. That's what, I already know that. Like it's so hilarious. If people think number of subscribers or view counts mean money, and it doesn't mean that all the time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But um, but guys. Make sure you click the link at the top because I have the link at the top and make sure you put in the code of bad boy 25 on the code of the link and make sure you guys go to the grandmail.com to check out grand cam and all the other good stuff. Let me pull this, pull this uh, back up and let's uh, let me refresh this page so we can play this one more time <laughs> before we head up out of here and make sure you guys, you know, sign up for the retreats. Let me, let's, let's play this real quick. <laughs> Shawty so bad when she's sliding down the pole, yeah When she's talking dirty while we getting closer Shawty so bad and then I try while we go to the city of the rose, yeah Join me at the next Vegas retreat yeah <laughs> make sure you guys get up on that make Lucario, sure Lucario, I just Lucario, I just have to say this really quick it took by the way to get to this point of, of having the courage to film something like this it mm. takes fucking courage to do something like that. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say I'm so grateful for the bad boy membership. I'm so grateful for the masculine identity membership. I'm grateful for all you guys on the Sunday panel. That's you it. guys are changing lives. And I'm always forever going to be a student of the game uh, with you guys. So I just want to say thank you for playing this uh, for advertisement and continue with what you're going to say. I just had to share my gratitude for you so much, you know, now that's what's up. And yo, man, appreciate you. Appreciate you coming on here. You know what I'm saying? And this is what the game does, man. The game changes your life and you know i appreciate you on here and guys remember get your tick get your uh you know sign up for the retreat um it's at the top of the chat and i'm gonna have it at the bottom of the um the video on the playback and april has it in the chat so click that and put in bad boy 25 as the code and yeah man we we about to make this happen uh anything else any last words you want to say before we wrap it up uh, just guys, if you have any questions, um, if you have any questions of, of anything that we talked about today, if you want to send me a direct message on Instagram, that's the best way to reach out to me. Uh, Coach Grand Cam is my IG as like it's been on the banner below. Uh, you can visit my website, thegrandmail.com, where I have all my prices of coaching. But if you want to like talk to me before you invest in coaching, I'm more than happy to, to share that conversation with you and get on a free call and discuss it. But the last thing I'll say is, again, look, Mr. Lucario, this is my first time appearing on your channel on this one-on-one -on -one stream. We've done Instagram lives together. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had YouTube streams with, like, other people before. But, again, to have this one-on-one -on -one private um, stream with you, again, it's, 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 a, it's a testament to, to, you know, you believing in me and seeing mm -hmm. my growth and also me believing in myself and me wanting to show that I – how grateful I am to to you guys. So appreciate sure, everything you guys do. Seriously, appreciate it, bro. Appreciate you, man. And guys, thanks for watching. May, make sure you guys click the link. Uh, sign up for the retreat. Make sure you guys get that shit happening. And uh, we're out of here, man. We'll holla at y'all later. Remember, the truth is inside you. Peace.